Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 2. And before this start, you don't have to worry about the other what ifs. Like what if Naruto was sent to the Marvel Universe? Don't worry guys, they are not cancelled. What if Naruto was trained by all Hokages? It is not cancelled. I haven't cancelled any what ifs on this channel, so don't worry about those guys, they will be out. So just sit back, relax and give me some more time, but yeah, you have nothing to worry about, they will be out guys. Because I see most of you guys asking me down in the comments about them. So yeah, nothing on this channel has been cancelled. So don't worry about that guys. So today I'm going to be giving you part 2 of what if Naruto was a crazy drunken swordsman. Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual. Share this to all of your friends in social media platform. And also guys, remember to go ahead and check out the other what ifs. Links will be down in the description. So yeah, don't forget to go ahead and check them out and enjoy. So without further ado, this will begin this new episode start now guys. So the last time we left off, at a very young age, Naruto was kidnapped by two chunins, who tied him up and brought him to the woods, as he left him at the edge of the land of fire. Mizuki wanted to end Naruto, however the other one, he started to feel remorse. He was just in this for the money, the council was paying them a lot of money, so he refused to allow Naruto to be killed. So they left him there with food, water and everything to survive, and with that they left. However, Naruto was found by. A last Senju, a very old Senju, who took the kid in and trained him for one year that he had left. He soon died after that, however, Naruto picked up a lot of things. Most of all, his love for drinking sake, swordsmanship, as he was immensely great in Kinjutsu. His other arts were natural, but well, Kinjutsu was his best. He was a master with a sword already at a young age like that. As Naruto came across Zabuza and Mamakai, however, Team 7 was there. Immediately, Naruto attacked Kakashi as he saw the Sharingan. Kakashi tried to calm him down as Zabuza was forced to leave, seeing that, well, it was too much of them now as the kid was trying to kill him as well. However, Kakashi calmed Naruto down as he asked him if he was Naruto Uzumaki. As Teiwaya lost it, she was a third member on Team 7. Teiwaya Uzumaki, Sakura Haruno, and Sasuke Uchiha. Kakashi had to say that Sasuke's name was Haruno. Rather than Uchiha, knowing that Naruto would try to kill him. So, with that, Naruto accompanied them back towards the land of Wave as they met Tsunami. Kakashi gave Naruto a book to read to familiarize himself with certain things because Naruto had this problem of identifying boys between girls. He usually gets them mixed up a lot as he remembers seeing Snedi of the Sani in the hot springs some time ago. That is the reason why he had hate Jiraiya. As Jiraiya had run away after he was peeping on Snaddy and let Naruto get blamed for it. And ever since Jiraiya has been chasing Naruto down. And Naruto had stole the summoning contract and signed it. Naruto had left for a week as he ran into Team 10. Team 10 was rather surprised as Shikamaru remember him. Children remember him as well as Ina was rather shocked. As she ended up coming across Naruto training alone. So she brought him back so he wouldn't catch a cold or be eaten by animals out here. As he was talking about her in his dream making her blush a bit. The next morning though he had to leave as he said that he would see her soon in the small note that he left as he arrived back towards the land of wave. It turns out that team 7 was in a debacle with Zabuza on the bridge. Haku had been killed and Zabuza had wiped out most of the bandits however Naruto came and killed Gato. Zabuza dropped to his knees as he told Naruto to end him as Naruto ended him without a second guess or a thought. So with that he made his way back. However, he was captured by none other than Jiraiya. As Naruto woke up, Tsunami was there as well. She gave him a kiss on the cheek thanking him for saving her. As Naruto then proceeded to run away. However, Jiraiya captured him once again along with Kakashi. But Naruto pants the both of them before he ran away. He came back to Kanoha sometime later as he wanted to check out this ramen that Kakashi was talking about as you remember ramen. However, he was brought to the Hokage's tower later as he met the whole man once again. 
Hiroson was rather upset about him being missing for so long. However, Naruto was an unusual person. Hiroson stamped him on the head with the Hokage symbol as the leaf insignia was on it. His first mission was to go and rescue Team 8 as Naruto came across Abu Rokusho as Team 8 was in a bad situation Kurnai having to focus on her kids however Naruto came there. She told him to run and protect the Jennings while she handled Aoi however Naruto sliced him down rather easily showing that Aoi was no match against him. Naruto had been staying in train ground 7 as Hiruzen told him that his apartment was still there as he had it cleaned for him throughout the years and he still paid the rent for it. As Naruto figured that he was not such a bad guy, Hiruzen wanted him to participate in the tuning exams. Kano had standards over the years that fallen a bit and he still wanted the other nations to know that Kanoha was still one of the strongest and after seeing what Naruto did he knew that Naruto was far stronger than most of the Jennings his age. So he wanted him to participate as Naruto decided to agree as long as he was getting paid and as long as he was getting sick. So yeah guys basically that's what I thought of you guys can switch across the playstation of yourself and also don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs over on Anime King, Anime King 3 and Anime Prince. I'll be posting them as soon as possible for you guys to enjoy. So yeah, without further ado, wasting more time, what do you say we jump right into this new episode, guys? And don't forget to turn on that bell notification to see exactly when I post. So let's begin now, guys. Naruto once again arrived at Ichikurami. Once again, he was confused why this place wasn't flocked with thousands of people, since they sell the best ramen, the best food in the entire world. As this time Tuki was there, he wasn't here the last time. Five bowls of Mr. Ramen, old man. Hey, who you call the old man said Tuki as he turned. That is when he saw the kid. It took him a few seconds. Wait, Naruto, is that you? His daughter had told him that Naruto was back, but he hasn't seen Naruto in three years now. Yep, old man, it's me, said Naruto. Throw me five bowls of Mr. Ramen and a bottle of steak, said Naruto. Tuki laughed. Five bowls of Mr. Ramen coming right up, he said. As for the steak. He pointed towards the wall where there was a poster, a picture of Naruto with an X on his face. Not allowed to buy sake, signed by Hiruzen and Sartobi. As Naruto's eyes started to twitch violently, before he slammed his hands on the counter. Goddamn monkey he yelled. However, Tuki placed on the first bowl in front of him to calm him down as Naruto dug in, forgetting about his anger rather quickly. As Naruto started to devour it, Uzumaki Teiwe arrived a few seconds later. She did not bother to even look around as she sat down and ordered a bowl of chicken ramen. As she heard the person next to her slurping down their ramen. This is the best food ever, said Naruto, as he was almost on the verge of tears. As Toki nodded towards him before he handed Tewaya her chicken bowl, as Naruto glanced up as he saw her, before placing his head back down as he started to eat. As Tewaya was calmly eating, the sounds were getting worse, as she had enough and wondered who the hell was sitting next to her as she got up and turned. Turning towards the direction she saw the person, she instantly recognized him because of his name. That Kakashi had called him, the last name however. Hey you, she said, you're Usumaki Naruto, right? As Naruto looked up, a few ramen were coming out of his mouth. Before he simply looked back down ignoring her, took his sigh. He knew Tewaya, and if there was one thing that he knew about her, she hated to be ignored. Marching out of her seat, she moved towards him. Hey. I asked you a question, she yelled. However, Naruto finished his final bowl as he patted his stomach. Ah, that was some good ramen, old man, said Naruto as he reached for his money and paid for the 10 bowls, seeing that he had ordered 5 more and quickly devoured all of them. He then walked away, ignoring Tiawai the same way. As she proceeded to lose it, she really hated being ignored. As Naruto was trying to find his apartment, the rookies were gathered as they were watching a scene. Uchiha Sasuke was currently scolding his little sister, Midori, who had seen him and told your mother, as she wanted to see him about the mission he came from recently. However, Sasuke told her to go away and not to bother him when he was with his ninja colleagues. This had angered Midori, because she saw herself as a better ninja than Sasuke, despite she hasn't even graduated from the academy yet. She was one year younger than Sasuke and the rookie 9, making her 12 years old as she was about as tall as Hinata, who was the shortest amongst the rookie nine. Her hair was a messy dark blue, almost black, as it reached down to her shoulders, as she was wearing a black suit with the Uchiha fan on the back of her shirt. 
Midori wasn't as stubborn or uptight as Sasuke was. Although she was very shy around guys, making people believe that she was uptight as Sasuke. However, she was very strong for her age. She would have given most of the Rookie 9 a good fight. However, she had a rivalry with her brother. That is why they were fighting in the middle of the road, despite her being so shy. So I'm not allowed to speak to you while you're with your friends. Just because I'm not an official ninja yet, Midori asks. Hmm, said Sasuke as he smirked. As Sakura looked towards the scene as she had something else in her mind. Recently, Ino told her that she could have Sasuke because she found someone better. Shocking Sakura by that. As Naruto, face buried in the Ichichi series books, walked on the scene as Teiwai was right behind him. As Naruto walked past him, as he say hey to Choji and Shikamaru before he dodged a punch from Teiwai as he kept on ignoring her. However, Teiwai was stopped by Ino who was glaring at her. What is it? Teiwai asks. Why are you with Naruto? Ino asks. Teiwai got even angry at that. I am trying to kick his ass, she said. Stay away from him, Ino said, as she was about to defend her new love interests. Sakura realized who Ino had a crush on now, as she placed together. Ino is in love with Naruto, she thought herself in shock. As Naruto made his way, before he stopped and glanced towards the back of Sasuke as he noticed the Uchiha fan on his shirt. Oh, so that is what you meant, Fox. As Naruto remember when, the Fox told him that they were lying to him. It was about the Uchiha. As they lied about Sasuke not being a Uchiha, and they kind of saved his life. The old man had told him that there was a family, a mother, and two children remaining. As Naruto then found someone jumping behind him, Naruto frowned as he knew exactly who it was. Why did he have to see her so soon? She was a devil. Kurenai smiled as she poked Naruto in the shoulder to get his attention. However, Naruto had to proceed to jump away from a kick from Asuma, who appeared out of nowhere. As Asuma glared at Naruto, I told you to stay away from her. I keep asking you, Azuma, what the hell have I done, said Naruto, getting the man name wrong once again. As everyone turned towards him hearing that even Midori and Sasuke. I warned you and told you not to try anything with my Haim, Asuma said. Your Haim, said Naruto. But I haven't seen her since that night. We slept in the same bed and she's over there, said Naruto. Asuma's eyes went wide until he realized that Naruto was pointing towards Ino. Kurenai started to laugh. As Asuma pointed towards Kurenai, that is my Haim, he said. Ino is my student. Oh, said Naruto. So why have you been chasing me down? Asuma, Kurenai said. You and I are not dating. But Kurenai, Asuma said, whipping his head around towards her. And stop making a fool of yourself in front of all the students, she told him. As Asuma looked towards all the kids, he decided to get the hell out of there for now. Too much attention as he flashed away. As Naruto couldn't understand as he spoke out loud, I wonder if he's retarded or something. Who would be into a wench like you? Said Naruto speaking out loud, talking about Kurenai. She cracked her knuckles. What did you just say? As Naruto unsheathed his blade, you think you can take me, woman? Don't think I'll go easy on you just because you're a woman. Kurenai eyebrows started to twitch as she smiled. The smile looked rather forced. Just because I'm a woman, she said. Yes, I don't like to fight women. I have bad histories with fighting them. He might be referring to the time that one of the Sanins beat the crap out of him. Or that other time when he was caught again doing the same thing at the hot springs. Kurenai sighed as she let go of her anger. She just wanted to thank him. I just want to thank you again for helping me and my student out on that mission, she said. Since he had got back to the village, he had just disappeared and she couldn't find him. Oh, don't worry about it, said Naruto. Well then, I need to go and get some rest. No, she said. Since you helped me, I'm going to help you as well. To make you go down the right path and not a wrong one. What do you mean, said Naruto. I know what your resting mean. Now give me that perverted book and your sake, she said. You're too young to have those things. As Kiba smirked, no one Naruto was going to get it. He deserved it for making fun of him on that mission. He was thankful that Naruto saved him, but he didn't have to poke him with his blade and laugh at him. You have a wild imagination that you can take them from me, said Naruto. Besides, I'm just going home to get some sleep. He vanished in a sunshin. Kurenai clenched her fists. The next time I see him, she said, she jumped off. Teiwai was angry. She was the one that was going to beat the crap out of him and get her answers, not anyone else. Shikamaru walked away with a yawn. Everyone is fighting. It's so tiresome despite him not being a part of it. Troublesome, he thought, as he made his way to go and watch some clouds. Much better than standing here. As Naruto finally got home and used the key to open the door. Entering, he quickly rushed towards the bedroom as he jumped on top of it. 
As he went to sleep, Nurkic slept for 17 hours straight, which was normal since he had trained a lot with minimum sleep. Now he was bored has been a week and he has not have a mission yet. With that thought he headed towards the old man. There was only old people on the street and people that came from party late in the night. When Nurkic arrived to the office the old man was sleeping, his head on the decks. As Nurkic noticed Kakashi was there on the couch as well, it was like someone had knocked him out. Jerry was also in there on the other side of the couch. As Nurta wondered what the hell happened yesterday. As Nurta banged his fist on the table waking up Harrison. Harrison woke up with an eye twitch. Good morning you brat he said. Knowing that he did that on purpose. Just to give him a more worse headache. Good morning old monkey said Nurta. I need a mission. Harrison looked up towards him. You need a mission huh? You don't realize how much problem you have caused me right? Problem? Explain said Nurta. See those two, Harrison said. As Nurta looked towards the other two, they came to me yesterday, together. With one other joining sensei is demanding changes to the team rosters. Oh yes, I understand. They want all of the worthless Chinese to quit, being on their team and get new ninjas, right? said Nurta. No, you idiot, Harrison said. They want you on their team. I really don't understand what's the big fuss about you to get them on your team. Well, I'm special, said Nurta. But you wouldn't understand that, would you, old monkey? said Nurta. As Harrison's eyes started to twitch even more, as Nurta had this smirk on his face before Harrison sighed. Jerry wants you to become his apprentice and stay teamless. That would be fine, except I need you on a team for what I explained to you yesterday. I don't get it, speak sense, said Nurta. I told you they want you on your team and they're fighting over you. And I told you to speak sense. What the hell does that have to do with me, said Nurta? Why would I join their loser teams? And I sure as hell ain't becoming the perfect stage apprentice. Harrison smiled at that. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, he said. So, you want a mission, huh? Yes, I'm bored, said Naruto. Well then, how about I let you lead the squads of Jenin on a C-rank mission? C-rank? Is that a mission suitable for my skills? Well, said Harrison, scratching his beard. C ranks are not the hardest, however, it is a good start. You just joined the village and you're still a genin yet. I am letting you lead a squad because of your impressive show of skills so far. Okay, I accept. Now tell me, what is the mission details? I will tell you that later first. You need to gather your squad. You need to pick two genins of your choosing and this person will have to be on the team. As he handed Naruto a folder. As Naruto read the name out loud. Uchiha Midori, he said. Yes, she's still an academy student but I decide to make her graduate early and become a member of your future team. Cut the crap said Naruto as he threw the file back towards Harrison. I can agree not to hunt them but I'm not gonna work with them. Harrison Green, what about we make a little deal then he said. 10 minutes later Uchiha compound. Since Itachi almost slaughtered the entire clan, it was a rare sight to see a lot of people here as a Hokage and Naruto himself. Arrive at the Uchiha compound, as Harrison knocked on the door. As the door was opened by Mikoto, she was surprised to get this visit. Hokage-sama, she said. Did Sasuke do something bad? No, it's not like that. I'm here for Midori. Could you get her? Midori, she thought. Midori never gets in trouble. She thought to herself as she made her way to get her daughter. And nice to see you as well, Naruto, she said. As Naruto looked at her walk away confused. Who is that, he said. How does she know my name? Let's just say that she was a friend of your parents, said Gerson. Oh, said Naruto. Some poor useless woman, my dad, nailed once. Harrison raised his eyebrow as he snapped his head towards Naruto. Wait, what did you say? Do you know who your dad is? As Naruto looked towards him, do you know which one of your testicles is your left one, he asked. Harrison was confused. The left one, obviously, he said. Of course, said Naruto. As Harrison's eyes started to twitch. As Naruto did not answer his question, however Mikoto returned with Midori, who looked like she just woke up. But she was presentable though. You wanted to see me Hokage-sama, she said. As Harrison reached into his coat. Because of your recent performance, I decided to let you graduate early and become a genin of Kanoha today, he said. As he had a headband, do you accept? A big smile came on her face, really? Of course I accept, she said. As she took the forehead band and hugged it. Sasuke is going to be so mad when he finds out, she said, with a happy smile. 
Here's in Clearly's throat. And this right here will be your teammate. Introduce yourself, Harrison said. As Naruto threw his face into hers, getting rather close as she stepped back. As he looked over her, I am Senju. Iarshiku, he said. Harrison bumped him on the head before he gave my look as Naruto up the bump. I was just playing around. Midori on the other hand realized this was the guy that Sasuke told her to stay away from. His name is Naruto Uzumaki. So Midori, are you ready for your first mission? You'll be leaving today. With this idiot right here being in charge, Harrison said. She nodded, yes Okakasama, she said, as she gave a salute. Okay, meet me in my office in an hour, Naruto. You get the other two and meet me there as well. Whatever you say, old monkey, said Naruto as he ran off. Considering that this was a temporary team, as Harrison told him to go and pick a Jenny, so Naruto decided to go for... Kiba, as he was the first name that popped into his head, and the one that he could remember. At the moment that is, however, he decided to put another girl on it. To balance the team out. But did he know any girls he wondered? He could always have a clone transform into that woman with the big titties. That way he would have something to look at every time. Although, the problem was, the old monkey wouldn't fall for it. Oh yeah, Kiba should be able to help he thought to himself. He was able to get into the Inuzaka compound because he said that he was here from the Hokage himself. He was pointing towards the house, arriving there. Naruto started banging his fist on the door. Kiba! Kiba, he yelled. As someone opened the door, it was a girl. She looked to be around three years older or two. This was none other than Hana Inuzaka. She was only wearing a towel as she had rushed down hearing someone banging on the door. What's wrong with you, she said. It's six in the morning, Hana said. Given Inuzaka's sensitive hearing, a lot of people might heard that. As Naruto stood there, that is when he saw the water that was still castrating down her body, allowing the towel to cling to her. Blood exploded from his nose, throwing him away. As Hannah watched him crash on the ground, as she started to giggle to herself. Kiba arrived a moment later. What the hell is going on, he said. As he saw Naruto. Naruto, he said. Is that you, he asked. As Naruto picked himself up. Hey, Kiba, said Naruto. Who was the total babe at the door, he asked. Huh? Kiba looked around, where, he said. I don't see any babes. I just see my sister Hannah. Kiba said not really getting it. As Naruto moved towards her and took her hand. It seems like fate wanted me to find you here, he said. Quoting the line from the book, however, he had a piece of himself in it as well. You are just a person I want to take on my mission, said Naruto. And you're also going as well, Kiba. You and your very beautiful sister here, Hannah. Kiba was angry, but not at what Naruto said. Why the hell would I want to spend more time with that witch, he asked. Hannah turned towards him. Kiba, she said. Her tone was too sweet and Kiba knew what would come, sorry, he said. As he turned away. So, are you gonna get going like that or are you gonna get dressed? She sighed. Alright, I'll come with you. Naruto was it, she said, as Naruto nodded. But only to see how Kiba acts on a real mission. As Naruto nodded, let's go then, he said. You look just fine to me. There's no need to put on anything else. Pervert, she said, as she closed the door in his face. They arrived back to the office as Jiraiya and Kakashi were still passed out. What the hell ever happened to them? It seems that they won't be waking up for some time now. Ah, you found the Naruto. That is Hana Inuzaka and she's a Chunin. I told you Jenin only. But all the other Jenins are busy so I had no other choice. What? No other choice? Just what are you implying said Hana? Shh, said Naruto whispering to her. I really hate the others. Just go along with it, he said. Alright, she said. Hmm, what a weird kid. Here is in sign, fine, he said, as he gave Naruto a paper. Naruto will be the captain of this mission. He has the same authority as a Jonin sensei, so what he says goes. As the others salute, as Naruto turned towards Hana, my first order is for you to present yourself in the same way when I first saw you. The next moment, Naruto was in excruciating pain. Every man in the close vicinity felt it, as Naruto dropped to the ground holding his groin. That's what you get, said Hannah, looking down towards the pervert. Around 10 minutes later, the east gate. So where are we going, Captain Kiba said. We're heading towards a village known as Oida, in the land of hot water. We're going to get an item there, said Nurt as he hung his head in disappointment. Hey, cheer up, said Kiba. This is a sea rank after all. 
The others are going to be so jealous that I got to go on another one after. One so soon, say Kiba with a smirk. But this is a baby mission, said Naruto. Um, Captain Naruto, we are only Jenning, and we're going in a sea rank for our first mission. I don't think that has ever happened before, said Midori, trying to cheer her captain and her future teammate up. As Naruto turned towards her, he was about to tell her that she should not speak within his presence, and it was her fault that they were going on this mission in the first place because she was a Uchiha. However, she was so cute, and he could not bring himself to do it, even if she was a Uchiha. So he chose to mumble. All right, follow me, team, he said, and speed it up. I really hate you, old monkey, he thought to himself, as they took off in the trees. Two days later, the team had gone through the mission as expected. They only had a little bit of fighting between the group. Well, it was a misunderstanding. Flashback. All of them were walking on a dirt road, making their way. This was due to the others talking about slow down. We need to rest. We haven't rested in a day. As Naruto has never really traveled with anyone before. However, Naruto knew how to take advantage of the situation. Hannah, he said, I need you to take the lead for a while. She raised her eyebrow, yes, she said. Are we still walking for a while, she asked. Once she was in front of him though, Naruto simply looked down. As Hannah started to walk and then she realized, Did you told me to take the lead so you can steer up my ass, she asked him. Yes, said Naruto. That is the reason I brought you in the first place. Hannah gritted her teeth, so that is the reason, she said. Captain, might I remind you that that is my sister, Kiba said. As Midori started back away, she did not want to get caught up in a fight. I'm going to kick your ass then. I'm going to take charge. I don't understand why the Hokage let you leave the squad in the first place, Hannah said angrily. Yeah, why would he? Maybe the old monkey is dumb. Do you think he's dumb, Hannah-chan, said Naruto. I think he's dumb, Naruto said before she could answer. No, Hannah said. As she turned towards him to kick his ass, however, he gripped the hilt of his blade, and Hannah saw something weird. She saw herself getting decapitated. Before the world returned back to normal, she gripped her throat rather quickly. What the hell? As she looked at him confused. Hey, what happened? said Naruto. Are you okay? I yes, I I'm fine. L let's just continue the mission, Naruto. She said to him. As Naruto smiled happily. Alright, he said. End of flashback. After something like that, you would think that Hannah was gonna distance herself away from Naruto. However, it was the exact opposite. She followed his every command same way. And she did not say anything about the perverted comments, or even when he read his perverted book. However, he no longer made those comments about her. As it made her wonder, did he not find her enticing anymore? Was she not good anymore, she thought to herself. With the mission completed, all they had to do now was bring the item back to Kanoha. It turns out the item was a custom made pipe that the old monkey had ordered for himself. As Naruto was furious by that and vowed that he would get the old monkey back for this. Just as they were leaving the village, it seems like Trouble had found Naruto once again. Or maybe Naruto was the one finding Trouble. They were now witness to a hostage or a kidnap attempt as they saw two big men wearing black cloaks with red clothes on it. Kidnapping a girl with blonde hair in a black and purple clothing. The girl looked to be a year older than Naruto. And she seemed to be 14, one year older than him. However, Naruto did not know that this girl was special. Her name was Yujito. She was a Jinjuliki of Kumo, Two Tails container. However, Naruto had heard some rumors about these guys. He couldn't quite remember, however, he knew that they belonged to an organization. He had gotten this information from Jiraiya, the same way he found out about his father. Jiraiya said things that he weren't supposed to say when he was drunk. They were still a distance off so they would not notice them unless they draw attention to themselves. What should we do Captain Kiba asks. Are we going to save the girl asks Anna. Those two are extra criminals said Naruto. All of the members eyes widen in shock. What? No way. How do you know that said Kiba. I have a very good source of information Naruto said. Naruto, you're strong, right? Do you think we have a chance, Hannah said. No, we can't do anything about this. We're heading back to Kanoha, said Naruto. But Captain said Midori, not wanting to leave the poor girl with those criminals. I said we're returning, and that is our order, said Naruto, in a serious tone. Five minutes later, none of them noticed that Naruto created a clone when they first found the woman. He had swapped places with the clone, 
so the real Naruto was still there. As a clone was leading them back to Kanoha, as Naruto only wished that the pervert had decided to stalk him this one time, when he actually need him, he knew that he could not win that fight. However, that girl, she was like him. Hey, I'm gonna need your help, said Naruto, as he was speaking inwardly. To the beast contained inside of him as he walked towards the grassy field. I told you to cut her legs. Kagazu said to his partner, Idon, as she had managed to run away from them earlier, before they were able to capture her. Jashin-sama does not accept, beating little girls, Idon said. Do it yourself. Idon said back rather angrily. I told you to do it, said Kakazu. However, they both came to a stop when someone walked onto the grassy field. Kakazu focused on two things, the blonde hair and whisker marks, while Hidon focused on the blade. As Hidon looked towards him, wondering who this brat was. Should I kill him, Hidon said. Just who the hell do you think you're going to kill, said Naruto, as he used one of his techniques, teleportation and slash. It was a modified version of the sunshine as he appeared next to Edon and sliced his head clean off. Naruto was shot that they supposed S rank did not dodge his attack as the body dropped with the head. Edon, you fool, the other one said as he kicked his partner, confusing Naruto. Hey, come on, cut it out. I just got my head cut off. The head was facing Naruto. You think you can kill me that easily, you brat, he said. Edon, take a good look at the kid. Huh? Why? Who the hell is he? The blonde here, the whisker marks, the age. How many people do you think fit that profile? As he done took a while. Well, get to it already and sew me back to my body, he said. He's a Kayubi Jinjulki, you fool. Well, it doesn't matter since you walk right into us. We will gladly take you along with the two tails. Ten copies of Naruto was created. As they all threw smoke bombs, covering the air in smoke. They rushed towards Kakazu. As one of the clones rushed and picked up Yujito who had been dropped when he sliced off Hidon's head, seeing that he was the one carrying her. The clone quickly took her and ran away. Meanwhile, the other clone with the team. As the clone turned towards the Uchiha of the group, Uchiha he said, she turned towards him. The old monkey said that you will be the vice captain so, as vice captain, your order is to get this group back to Kanoha safely. Yeah, she said confused. As she wonder where a poof, a clone, Hannah said. But when did he? Don't tell me that the bastards said keep as he look, the way they came from. There's nothing we can do. We can't refuse an order from a superior officer. Remember the Hokage told us that he had the same authority as a Jonin, Hannah said, looking towards her brother. Midori nodded to Hannah. We should go then. Kiba was a bit pissed off. This was another C rank mission on his record. If his Jonin Sensei, well acting Jonin Sensei got killed for this, it would be a big letdown not to mention. Naruto was pretty cool and he also saved his life. Despite him being an ass most of the time. Meanwhile with Yujito, she opened her eyes as she looked up towards the individual. She was too weak to fight back. Who are you? Where are you taking me? She said. I'm nobody. And I'm taking you to Kumo. She was surprised. Y you're helping me? He simply ignored her as he kept on moving northeast. They had to get to the land of lightning first, before passing through the borders and getting to Kumo. She was rather surprised though that he was helping her. Back with Naruto and the two Akaski members, with her out of fear he can cause as much damage as he want, with not risk getting her hurt. Bringing his hand together, Naruto created 500 clones. Kakazu had so Hidon's head back together, as they were using Taijutsu to slaughter Naruto clones. As the real Naruto jumped away, before he slammed his hand together and pulsed out a large amount of chakra. Exploding clone jutsu! Boom! The entire place rock as a colossal explosion swallow the entire vicinity. Naruto stepped forward as he saw the smoke. When the smoke cleared away, every single grass, everything was burned and destroyed in a gigantic circular area. Four strange beings stood there. Their bodies were made out of dark materials. They surrounded the two Akaski members like a wall of sorts. As Naruto was shocked, as Kakazu no longer looked human, he done was completely fine. As Naruto realized he was going to take a lot more tape than down, he started to tap into the fox power. As chakras started to bubble up around him, followed by one tail. 
As Naruto shot forward, rushing towards Edon, swinging his sight as Naruto clashed with him, sparks flew everywhere. The four creatures attacked them with water, wind, lightning, and fire, even attacking Edon as well because they were close. However, both of them dodged as Naruto kept on moving, forcing Edon to move as well as they slashed and hacked at each other. After a few minutes, Naruto clone that was leading the team back to Kanoha had catch up with his other clone, causing to move away. Yujito was now at the land. Between the land of hot water and the land of frosts, as Naruto's unknowingly also healed her as well, so she could travel the rest of the way without any problem. All he had to do was now to stall these two to make sure that she can get to the land of lightning and she will be safe. As Naruto jumped and dodged a fire attack before he replaced himself, as the wood that replaced him with was blown to pieces by lightning. Jumping away as Naruto got a large distance away, as he bite his finger and summoned a large amount of the fox power. Summoning Jutsu! Boom! Two poom of smoke went up in the air as a giant Gamabunta and Gamakin arrive. I need your help guys, Naruto says he stood on top of Gamakin. I will do my best but I might screw up. I'm a bit ungraceful, Gamakin said. As Gamabunta scowled, you'll have to buy me tons of sake for this brat, he said. The special one. Sure thing, boss. Said Naruto as a fortunate creatures were attacked by the toads. Not only is he a Jinjuliki, he's also that wannabe half ass bounty hunter that I hate Kakazu said. But he's still mine so stay back Edon said, ignoring Kakazu. As Naruto knew there was a good chance of him dying here, but he just couldn't let that girl alone with these two bastards. So if he was gonna die, he might as well go out in a blaze of glory. Another tail emerging behind him as his whisker marks enlighten even more. His fangs grew his nails extended. As he dug in the ground, on all fours like an animal, as he gripped his sword his other hand. As Naruto shifted his leg a bit before he muttered, Great Dragon shot! As Naruto slides upwards, a strange wave bursts from his blade and rip apart the area. It slammed right into Kakazu, however, his body had hardened as he took no damage. He then jumped over Kakazu's head as he rushed toward Naruto and swing his sight. As Naruto ducked underneath and rolled, the man then brought it down and slammed it in the ground as Naruto jumped away. As for Gamakin and Gamabunta, every time they hit the damn creatures they seem to take no damage at all, which was rather frustrating seeing that the toads could actually get hurt and bleed except for these immortal bastards. As the toads watched as they flew away as they had to chase after them, Naruto got slammed right in his stomach by Kakazu as the man had caught up to him and gripped him by the face. He done then proceeded and knocked him up in the ear with the back of his staff. Smiling at the kid's pain, it was then that the lightning one shot Naruto in the back from mid ear, causing Naruto to collapse on the ground. No lying face first in the ground, Naruto was pissed off. Fine, he said to himself, It's about time that he let loose. More of the fox trucker started to emerge as Naruto's body started to tremble. It was then a massive violent explosion swell through the entire area, it seems like orange flames. Swallow the field. Once it died down, a miniature Kayubi stood there. As Naruto went crazy, four tails swinging behind him, Gamabunta and Gamakin looked toward each other. They had to get back and send messages to Konoha quickly. This was getting out of hand. Meanwhile, Hokage's office. The two were still arguing once they got up. They were arguing about getting Naruto on their team. One wanted him as his apprentice and one wanted him on his team. The other person was Kurene as well. She thought it was unfair that Kakashi had gotten the genius Sasuke Uchiha and Tewai Uzumaki who showed a knack for Genjutsu on his squad who she wanted and Kakashi now wanted Naruto on his team and that was her breaking point. Naruto would be on her team or none other. Enough jure sama You will take Sasuke and I will have Naruto on my team Kakashi said. Sasuke was... well... It was hard to... Put in words how arrogant he was and how self loathing he was. Just because he was one of the last few Uchiha's remaining in Konoha, he thought that gave him a knack above everyone else. Asuma was also here as well, begging Kurnai not to change her team roster. Shut up, Asuma said Kurnai, a tip mark farming over her eye. Here's in size, he wondered where was his pipe. As he was getting real old for this shit. Back where the others were. The fight was getting more intense as Naruto was wrapping up the tails. His power was... igniting. 
his form was becoming more demonic, more large, forcing the zombie brothers to jump away. Things were getting really, really bad. As Naruto was tapping into his rage, he was not going to die today. He was going to rip them apart. The fox was enticing him. Yes, give in to your rage. Use my power and rip them to shreds. Now come and rip the seal apart and let me take care of them, said Krama. As Naruto reached up to rip the seal off, however, his hand was grabbed as someone pushed him away. As Naruto looked up from the sore water that he was in, Four Tokagi the fox growl, get in here so I can rip you to shreds. Always so unpleasant. Let's go somewhere else to talk, shall we, Naruto? Bam. They were now in a white empty space. As Naruto picked himself up, Dad, he said. Yes, my son, said Minato. Where the hell did you come from, Naruto asked. Minato laughed and it surprised me that he said that. As Naruto laughed as well before he buried his fist into Minato's guts. I guess I had that coming, said Minato. As he told Naruto that he sealed some of his chakra into his system. As Naruto got to meet his father, something he never thought was going to be possible. He told him what happened 13 years ago. The man who attacked and why he was forced to seal the nine tails inside of him. As Naruto was even more pissed now, he was going to hunt that Uchiha down and slaughter him. Minato called him over as he calmed his son down. His son was quite a vocal one. As he placed a hand on his head, causing Naruto to smile. Back in the outside world, Hidon and Kakazu came to a stop as he saw Naruto turn back normal. However, something about him seems different. Kakazu also felt another chakra that was circulating through him. Unknown to them, Minato had used the remainder of his chakra to take over Naruto's body. And with Naruto allowing it, as Naruto picked up a stone, before he threw it forward towards Hidon, Hidon let the pebble bounce off him, confused by that until Naruto arrived in front of him. And a Rasengan formed his arm, as he grinded it in Hidon's gut, throwing him away. As Naruto landed, his voice was even different. I think I'll call that the father-son, flying, thunder god super Rasengan technique, Minato chuckled. As Hidon was sent sailing, smashing through several trees. Who are you? said Kakazu. Knowing that something different was going on. Sorry, don't have time to talk, said Minato. As he closed his eyes. Still there, he said. Thank Kami. All of a sudden, Naruto vanished away. Meanwhile, Killer B thought that this was a perfect day to write some rap lyrics. As he was currently writing down some rap. What he did not expect was for a younger Minato no as that is what he saw. As the whisper marks there told him that it was not Minato, however, it looked like him. And this was also the Nine Tail container collapsing right in front of him, shocking him. As B raised the eyebrow, what the hell? Back in the mindscape, Minato seemed winded. Whoa, that was so badass, said Naruto. As Minato waved him over before he hugged his son. He'd already told him something rather important. I'm out of time, he said. Remember, no matter what, me and your mother will always be proud of you and love you no matter what, he said. As he held on to his son for what was going to be the last time. As Naruto found this rather mushy, despite this being his father, as he told him to get off, making Minato chuckle. As Minato also told him that he should focus on having one girlfriend rather than having so many. However, Naruto did not understand that, since in the book that he read, it said that having many was what made the guy a badass. It seems that the pervert was right. Dad must be a genius when it came to being a ninja. However, when it comes to being a woman, he was an idiot, Naruto thought to himself. Time skip. There were side effects of Minato taking over Naruto's body. After all, there had to be. This was not really common, seeing that Naruto willingly allowed him to take over. He was unconscious for about three days. That left him in a vulnerable position. However, several things happened in the three days. Yujito returned home as she reported everything. As Naruto's squad had returned and reported everything about the S-Rank criminals. Hiruzen told them not to utter to a word to anyone that Naruto was missing. As he ordered Kakashigai and Tenzo to look for Naruto. Jiri had not been at the village at that moment. As he quickly sent an envoy to tell him everything. So where was Naruto that was the big thing? Well, he was in a bed at the moment. He has been sleeping for the last three days. 
He had been teleported to the B location. As B phone looked at Cade really odd, B would enjoy some steak in the afternoon. And Naruto would wake up. B thought that he was really awake, but no. He was still sleeping, but he seemed to smell the steak. That must be the case as he took a bottle and drank it before he went back to sleeping. However, today, Yujito was trying to ask B to help her find her savior. However, B told her that she shouldn't worry about that and she should just get stronger and learn how to control her tail base power. But on the inside though, Samoe was there as she was looking at the sleeping individual. As she leaned in rather close, look at his face. However, Naruto's sword was resting on the night table. He quickly pulled it as he placed it at her throat. Who are you? He said. She looked towards him, not having a reaction to him, pressing his sword against her throat. You're cool enough, she said. Naruto was confused by what she meant. Cool enough for what? To be my husband, she said. This was a new behavior for Samoe, seeing that she never really seemed to like anyone. However, when she did though, she became a bit obsessive. And she didn't know what it is, but there was something about this guy that she just liked. However, Naruto was freaked out. He knew about this marriage thing. As one woman would trap you in a house. And yes, you would have babies with her. However, you would be trapped with her for the rest of your life. That was not what he wanted. He wanted to be free. That is the same kind of nonsense his father was spouting. Get the hell away from me, said Naruto as he yelled. As B moved back in the room, hearing that Naruto was awake and Yujito, afraid that Samui was caught. While she was distracting B, Samui was supposed to sneak into B's house and find any scrolls or book on how to control Jinjoki's power or find any strong jutsus. That was the whole plan that they came up with. However, once they got in, they were rather surprised that Samui was hugging Naruto's left arm as he was trying to get away. Who are these people? Naruto thought to himself as he saw them. Sorry, Yujito. I failed the mission, said Samui. As she was still hugging Naruto's arm, Yujito looked towards B. That's him. He's been here the whole time, B sensei, she said. However, Naruto was able to throw Samui onto the bed as he picked up his blade. Who are you people? And what do you want with me, he said. Relax, little nine. Everything's gonna be just fine. As Naruto narrowed his gaze, you know way too much. You must be annihilated. Calm down, little nine. I'm a Jinjuliki as well. And I'm the one that has been taking care of you for the past three days. Since you crashed into my home. Oh, I see, said Naruto. He walked over and held out his hand. You have my thanks then, Mr. Bean. Ain't no thing, said B as he shook his hand. As Naruto looked towards Yujito. He had seen her before. What was her name again? Hello, said Yujito. As he was just staring at her. As she started to become a bit embarrassed. As Samoy was getting a bit jealous in the background. Have we met before, said Naruto looking at Yujito. She was a bit sad that he did not remember her. As Samoy walked over and took Naruto's hand in her own. As Naruto looked towards her. As Yujito was a bit taken aback at this. Samoy never really act this way. Why did she have to start to show interest the only guy that Yujito was interested in? Samoy, can you get off him said Yujito. I got things to do said B as he went out of the room. Knowing what was to come. What? Are you jealous? You know that's not cool right? Samoy said. This is fun and all said Naruto as he picked Samoy up. And threw her on the bed once again. But I have to get going as he started to walk away. Wait. The next thing he knew he was hugged. Thank you for saving me said Yujito. Yeah. No problem said Naruto. As he wondered what the hell was going on. Yujito didn't turn around. As Naruto saw her legs and ass. He had carried her over his shoulder. He had not. Look at her face that much. Ah. You're that girl said Naruto. So you do remember me she said. Yeah, good thing everything worked out. Now see ya, said Naruto as he waved goodbye, before he flashed away, in a sunshine. Once Naruto got away from that village, he decided to send a message to the old man, and told him that he won't be returning for some time. So Naruto went drinking. As he went partying, he then went pirating. He then went training for about two weeks. However, Naruto realized that he had no idea where he was. After the week was up, as he was wandering around, oh yeah, summoning Jutsu, as he summoned his friend Gamekin and told him to take him to Konoha in exchange for sake. At the moment, Kurunai was trying to plead her case with Herzen to meet Naruto to join her team when, 
a junkie Naruto walked in. As Kurenai could smell the sake coming from him, she was about to scold him for drinking once again however Hiruzen told her to leave. They had something to discuss. As Naruto told him but he left out a lot of details, he never told him about the girl from Kumo, nor that he went to Kumo. Hiruzen was not by an outfit but he was glad that Naruto was safe. As it was time that he told him about his new team. So I found you a third member of your team, Hiruzen said. As they move on from talking about the encounter with Yakasuke. Okay, good. Anyone I know, said Naruto. I doubt it. Her name is Hanabi Hayuga, the younger sister of Hinata Hayuga. She's 11, and the best student of that age group. Similar to your other teammates. I see, said Naruto. And her sensei, Hiruzen gave my folder as Naruto read the name. Meatball Dongo. Hiruzen laughed at that. It's Midorashi uncle, he said. So, it's all girls, said Naruto. Are you some kind of feminist, he asked. They were all best suited to be on this team. Gender does not matter, Hiruzen said. You know, said Naruto as he got up. I am really starting to regret my decision of coming back here. Well then, before you leave, let me read something to you. This is a letter from the Raikage, Naruto froze. As he want to know why one of his Kunoichi is ordering him to arrange a marriage between herself and one Senju. As Naruto looked towards him, before he ran away, here is in sigh, as he simply shook his head. Meanwhile, Naruto made his way towards Ichiroku Ramen. As Naruto was allowed to buy alcoholic beverage once again, because he would not threaten or try to kill the Uchiha's. So he sat down. 10 beef ramen and 10 beers, said Naruto. I am scolded him about him drinking. As at that moment, Ino and T.Y. were walking past when they saw Naruto. They looked at each other before they both made their way in the ramen stand. As they sat down on his left and right, however, he chose once again to ignore everyone around him and simply eat his ramen. As Naruto ate his ramen and drank his beer, they started to lose their patience as he was really ignoring them. As T.Y. had to find another way of getting his attention, attacking him, chasing after him wouldn't work. So she decided to tease him a bit as she sat down right on his leg. However, Naruto simply turned the bowl and kept on eating and ignoring her. Ino was pissed off that she didn't think of that. Hello shit hey Tiwa yelled right in his face. As Naruto looked up towards her, before he returned back to his bowl, grumbling that he was not paying attention she became a bit more daring as she sat right in his lap. As Naruto stretched his arms once he was done eating, great job as always old man, I'll be back tomorrow he said. He simply picked her up and placed her down before he ran away. Boot girls chasing after him. As when they turned the corner he was there waiting on them. What do you two want he said. I already told you. I want to know who the hell you are said Tewire. Oh um I want to ask if you want to do something sometime. Maybe I'm um, trained together Eno said with a smile. I should have ordered more beers or state bottle and Ruta thoughts. Alright you two follow me he said. As he led them to the training room before he sat down. The girls doing the same. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, he said. As well as Senju. As he looked towards Tewire. She was confused by the Namikaze name. My dad was Minato Namikaze and my mother was Kushina Uzumaki. They're both dead, he said. Tewire winked a bit as he realized he was nagging him. And his parents were probably a sore topic for him to talk about. So that is who I am, said Naruto. And you, he said, looking towards Ino. I'm going to start training now, so you can join me. Great. What kind of training? I'm going to practice my new one sword assassination technique style. You can be my practice target. Y you're joking, right? As Naruto laughed. Yes, I am. It was quite funny, he said. You can do what you do. If I see something I can help with, I'll help you improve it. Okay, sounds good, she said. Tell you why I demanded no more about him. Where has he been for the last three years? And are they family? I'll tell you another time, for now. How about you join us, said Naruto. Seeing that Kakashi rarely trained them, she decided to join in. Today ended with Gamahiro knocking Naruto out, as the girls had to take him back to his house. They didn't have the keys and Naruto didn't have them either, so they took him back to Tewaya's house. However, Ino did not want him to stay here with Tewaya. Tewaya told her to go and screw herself, but Ino refused to leave, as she sat on the couch, while Naruto slept blissfully. But guys, to be inspired right here, if you want to see next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to be posted. Remember to share all of your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys, don't forget to go ahead 
and check out the brand new series over the other channels and enjoy those guys. So yeah, without further ado, I'm over now. See you guys soon. Peace, guys.